Hello everyone, in this video we are going to cover the most important parts of Jest, using a simple React app. Before we begin, only 90% of you have subscribed to the channel. If you want to support the channel, please hit the like and subscribe button so we can continue releasing content. Thanks! If you don't know what is Jest, Jest is a JavaScript testing framework built by Facebook, that works on projects using TypeScript, Node, React, Angular, Vue and more. In this video, we will be testing a simple React component. These are the list of Jest functions that we will be learning throughout the video. We are going to learn how to get elements, by text or click on elements, spy on API calls and many more. Let's begin. So we have a component called checkout, which receives an array of products and emits an event to on checkout. The component renders the product names and contains a checkout button. The button will call a function that will trigger an API call to a random endpoint and run props.onCheckout. We have the app.tsx which is the root component. It imports the checkout component and renders it. We pass a random products array containing a Pepsi and a Cola items. On checkout trigger, we don't have to do anything for now. We have a test file here called checkout.spec.tsx, let's call the test suite to be checkout. Our first test will check if a component is rendering correctly. First, we need to render the checkout component and pass an array of random products. But first, let's create that array. Before we continue I am going to put the web application on the side so that you can see how does the checkout component looks like. To set the on checkout, we can simply use the jest.fn function that will mock a function. Then, to check if the component renders correctly, we can simply expect the element to be truthy. Let's run this test. Great it worked! As we can see, the test passed correctly. Which means our component is correct. Next, I will be testing if the component is displaying the product names correctly. I will copy-paste this function and rename the test name. Let's comment out the first test so that it does not run unnecessarily. Now when we pass an array of products, we expect the checkout component to display it. To check if a text is being displayed, we can use the screen module provided by the React testing library and call the getByText function that searches for an element with that text. Then we expect that that element is in the document, which means it's being displayed. So our test dummy product data contains two items, so let's check if both of the product names are being displayed. Nice, the tests are passing which means the component displays the product names. Now, instead of writing get by text, I am going to write query by text and run the test again. As we can see, the tests also pass successfully, so what is the difference? The difference between the two is that, when get by text does not find the element, it will throw an exception, and the test will fail. However, the query function returns null if it does not find the element. Let's see this in action. I am going to use the get by text now, but I will be searching for a text that does not exist. Let's see what will happen. As we can see, the test failed because it was unable to find an element with the text AAAA. Now let's use the not operator. Logically the test should pass right? because not to be in the document means that the text does not exist. Let's test this. Oops it failed again. For the same reason that I mentioned before. The get operation will throw an exception if it does not find the element. Now let's try the not operator with the query function. It works. Just because the query does not throw an exception and continues. Now instead of saying not to be in the document, we can also try to use the to be null function. It checks if the query by text is returning null, which means the text is not being displayed in the component. Yep, it passes. What will happen if we try this with the get by text? If we'll fail again for the same reason. Let's see this in action. Oops it failed. Now, one last thing before we move on to the next test, we cover get by text, query by text, I want to also cover the get by role. With the get by role, you can search for an element that has an specific role with the name. In our case, 
I will checking if the checkout button is there. Let's see this in action. It passed. This means that we have that element. Next, we will create a test that clicks on the checkout button and checks if the component is calling the correct API with the correct HTTP event. To click on the button, I will be using the user event library, again, from the testing library. The user event library provides more advanced simulation of browser interactions, such as clicking, typing, selecting dropdowns, and many more. Let's install this module first. Import it at the top and now it's ready to be used. First we will click on the checkout button using user event. Then we will check if the button is behaving correctly. Logically, when we'll click on the button, it will make an API request, and then call the props.onCheckout function. We set the onCheckout function to be onSubmit which is a mock jest function. Then we can test if this function is being called when we click on the button. To test that, there is a very useful function called, to have been called, times, which you can specify how many times the function has been called, if any. In our case, we are expecting the function to be called once. Hence we put a 1. Let's test this. It failed. It is saying that, it expected the number of calls to be 1 but it received 0, which means the onSubmit function didn't fire. And that's reasonable. In Jest, we cannot make a network request with Oxios. It fails. That's why the Oxios post is not resolving correctly, hence the onSubmit is not being called. How do we resolve this? It's easy. We need to mock the Oxios post request. To do that, I will be using a library called Oxios Mock Adapter. With this libraries you can mock Oxios function and resolve it to whatever you want. Let's install the mocker library and import it at the top. We will create a Oxios Mock Adapter object and listen to the post HTTP event and resolve to an empty response. We have to specify the correct URL because otherwise the tests will also fail. Let's run the test again. It failed. But why? That's because HTTP calls are asynchronous functions so we have to wait for them. To do so, we can use the wait for functionality provided by Jest. To do so, we can write a wait wait for, that will wait for the function to be called. The default timeout is 5 seconds. Which means, if the function didn't call on submit in 5 seconds, the test will fail again. Let's run again. Nice, the test is passing. What does this mean? This means that we tested when we click on the button, the component is behaving as expected. It is making the API request and the calling the prop function correctly. Now, just for fun, let's see what happens if we check if the on submit is being called twice. Nope. Failed, it is expecting the function to be called once but we specified to. Now for the final test. We will learn how to use the re-render functionality in Jest. What is a re-render? Re-render allows you to render the component again in a single test. So when you change the input properties of the component, the component will be re-rendered. In Jest, when you call the render function, it return the re-render function that you can receive and call it again with different inputs. In our case, I will change the products array and set one item that has a fonta. If we run this, we see that the test failed, because HTML now no longer contains the previous items. The components has been re-rendered. And if we search for fonta now, we should find it. Nice. This is all from me for this video, hope you enjoyed it, I will be providing this test in a GitHub link so you can learn from it. If you have any questions please write in the comments and I will see you later.